Hi! I am here with Amanda today, or mm. she's so Mickey. I'm here to announce a new project called Back to University. I've made a video in the past where I talk about how I didn't do all my reading at university, which as a literature student... No one can. It's hard. Except Hermione. <laughs> Except Hermione, but she had a time turner. I've made a very long list of all the books that have ever been assigned to me at university for literature courses. I have also posted these on my blog, which I'll put a link in the description if you want to browse so today we're gonna go through the books that I'm planning to read because that's the idea behind it The books that I never quite finished or that I never quite started mm -hmm. I want to read them or reread them and then also get rid of them because I want to try and get rid of some of these books But just I feel like I can't if I haven't read them can't let it go. It's unfinished business Yes, I've gathered some books from the list that I'm really kind of excited about reading and Amanda has gathered some books that she has read I studied American literature and Sana studied British literature. It uh, has a little bit of overlap I know that you've read so much, so I thought there would be so much overlap, but mm -hmm. it's not. We have The Tempest by Shakespeare, the Oxford Shakespeare edition, which I think is one of the best ones you can get. And one of the reasons I love it so much is because people fight over the interpretations. People say, you know, it's an allegory for colonialism. It's an allegory for, for capitalism. I think that any text that gets critics that excited and that contentious is totally worth reading. This book is one that's also on the list that Rosanna gave me for the Shakespeare project. I completely forgot that I already owned it. I have a lot of these Penguin classics. This is one that I'm fairly certain I've read most of. I remember I really enjoyed it, but I just can't remember that much of the story and I can't remember if I read all of it. This is one of the ones that I just want to reread and then once I'm done with it, decide whether I want to keep it. So this is a story of this really wild girl and her mm -hmm. family's always just like, behave like lady. Mm -hmm. And she has this brother that gets sent off to school and he's like this really weak boy and this really rambunctious character. Mm -hmm. Moving into the 21st century, we have White Teeth by Zadie Smith. Zadie Smith, by the way, who teaches at my university and wow. whom I saw writing in the library one time and just about died. Anyway, White Teeth is sort of her answer to Ulysses or other books like that. It's about a couple of different people in modern day London, their kind of worlds intersecting. What I really love in urban books is when you get a really specific feel of the neighborhood, a really a really good sense of what streets are like and what sounds are going on and how the people relate to one another. So definitely worth it if you love a vibrant setting that is itself a character in the story. And I'll be able to add that to my book set in London list, which Absolutely. is an ongoing series. To follow on the theme of uh, the Mona Floss, we have a, the very similar looking. Tess of the Durbervilles, which I know I've talked about before as it being one of my favorite BBC miniseries. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen it? I have not. It's heartbreaking. Once again, this is one that I've read, I think, most of. Very sad story of a girl from a poor family whose father overhears that they actually are descended from a really rich family. So she's called Derbyfield and the rich mm. family is called the Derbyfields and she is sent to go to their house and like claim kinship. It doesn't go very well and she has to kind of hide what happened to her there for the rest of her life. Speaking of ill-fated English novels, Jane Eyre, I'm sure many of you had to read in school but in my opinion this is one of those books that you read as you get older and that grows with you. So I read it first time in high school when I was about 17. I really loved Rochester, thought he was brooding, thought he was, <laughs> you know, just the, the best of the best. And then read it again last year and realized that it's not a very healthy relationship to be getting into. As you get older, I think different parts of it stand out to you. And I also love Jane Eyre because there's so many kind of literary references in it. The book opens with a scene with her reading. Books are very vibrant you know, within this own book, which is a cool kind of referential thing. To kind of stay with the gothic-y theme, I have Nightmare Abbey by Thomas Love Peacock. I think this is like supposed to be a parody of the gothic genre, and I remember being very confused by it. Once I've reread some of these gothic novels, I will give this one a go and see if I can make sense mm -hmm. of it this time. This is a book that I would also reread if I were doing this challenge because I had to get through it very quickly in a very packed semester, and I didn't love it that much. It's really desperate in the beginning. The poor guy is having a very bad time. There are a lot of minor characters that are really interesting slash problematic, like not a lot of very exciting women. The illustrations are really cool. The language is lovely as a non-English person to read and hear just kind of like the the really vibrant vocabulary. I haven't read any Dickens, which is a problem. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I skipped this lecture. Why did I skip this lecture? Also, Sherlock Holmes wasn't as cool then, because mm. this was kind of a couple of years ago. There hadn't been any of those movie adaptations or like the Sherlock series. Mm, right yeah. now, everyone would be at that lecture, loving it. So I did buy this and never really read any of it. And now I'm actually halfway through. So I'm on my way. This might be 
be one of the first reviews for the Back to University series. I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would, but like in its historical context, I think it's quite interesting. Are you noticing plot lines that you see currently yes, in the TV shows? Yes, it's so much fun, like little <laughs> references, like all the nerdy references they put yeah. in. I could definitely recommend it if you enjoy Sherlock. This is probably my favorite book um, of any of the ones that I selected, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's only about 75 pages, but it is one of the most exquisite gothic works of literature I think exists. The characters are amazing. If you just sort of have the idea of a transformation of, you know, the guy kind of growing and stretching and yelling horribly into a monster, you're missing out on a lot. It's amazing. The sort of mystery is rich. Even though you know that he turns into Mr. Hyde, it is still so suspenseful and so wonderful. Someone gets murdered in the street and there's like potions and there are letters. This is a beautiful new addition. It mm. is, yeah. Look at all the, the chemistry. I love that gothic moment where science is kind of advancing faster than people can, can make sense yeah. of it. These fears about chemistry and being able to alter you beyond recognition or beyond like the natural boundaries of what humans should be. And I'm going to finish with Paradise Lost, which is in this giant beautiful Norton somewhere. Paradise Lost is one of those books like the Odyssey or the Bible where once you read it you realize that you've been missing out on so many literary references your whole life. Paradise Lost makes up epigraphs, It people make allusions to it, people internalize it and it influences their work in a way that they don't even understand. So reading it, it really kind of unlocks all those literary references for those of us who are really into this world. And even if one is not, Satan is one of my favorite characters um, in, all, in all of literature, which is probably a weird thing to say. They made us read this for our first year, obviously for context. And I've read lots and lots of bits from it. But because of that, I don't feel like I have any understanding of the kind of the full text. I mean, it's been like eight years. I think I could do it with a reread. The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. That's the most difficult thing to say for a Dutch person. This is from my apocalyptic fiction course. I read half of it probably. <laughs> I remember talking about it and like being super intrigued. As it says, The Drowned World, I think it's just about like a massive flood that's happened. I think it takes place in London. I remember something about them going into like a museum and stealing art and there's like Cool. Pirates, and we had a whole discussion about one of the characters wanting to become the new Adam, like the only person to survive and yeah, like yeah. start a new world. And I think it's a bit crazy as well. I just really want to read this. I hate this edition though. I've seen some really cool vintage editions of these. I'm excited to read that. That's my primary to read list wow. for all of this. I've got so much to read. But I would love to hear how many of you, if you studied English lit, American lit, British lit, colonial lit, anglophone lit. There are so many different ways that you can kind of do a literature degree, what yours was like. And if you go through the list and there's any books that immediately you're like, you have to read that one, let me know. Thanks for being in my video. If you're you want to check out Amanda's channel, it is She's So Mickey, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Doi! Doi!